Ioannis Kasoulidis is with me, the Foreign Minister of the Republic of Cyprus. Now, in this interview, I would like to start by asking you something about this place where we are, Berlin. What does it feel like for you to walk around a city, a European capital that once was divided, much like your capital, Nicosia, is, but where border installations are essentially now tourist sites and a thing of the past? Because of my age, I had the opportunity to be in Berlin when Berlin was divided and to cross over with all that procedure that was needed to go to East Berlin. Then I came to Berlin uh, when uh, the mirror came down. Germany was reunited and Berlin was reunited and became the free capital of a free country. Undoubtedly, as you have said, the feelings for a Cypriot are totally different, more immense, than the feelings of any other European. The European was looking at a divided Europe. We were looking at a divided Europe, but at the same time at a divided country. And this, of course, brings the feelings and the determination to, to do what we must in order to see in Cyprus the reunification of Nicosia and the reunification of Cyprus. But it'll be 50 years next year that Cyprus is essentially divided. Now, you've just come back from a working meeting with your German counterpart, Annalena Baerbock. Did you ask her specifically whether Germany can act as a mediator to solve the problem that is known as the Cyprus problem? Yes, I have asked her, and it's up to her to evaluate. I think in order to made things clear. Germany would like, like any other country with influence, to come into the efforts for the reunification of Cyprus, but they need one thing. They need to see that from both sides there is political will for this purpose. I personally believe that this political will exists the last uh, example of this um, will comes from the results of the local elections that have taken place within the Turkish Cypriot community. The forces who are in favor of the solution of the bizonal by communal federation and not in favor of partition. Uh, one, elections in the most crucial uh, municipalities, like Nicosia. Another characteristic is in Famagusta, in where Varosha is, where the elected mayor is against, has declared himself many years back against what has happened with Varosha today. So we are very much encouraged. We don't think that uh, because of the policy of Turkey, which shows a sort of incompatible uh, with uh, resuming negotiations, that this will take place and that uh, after the end of the elections, uh, signs from the Greek Cypriot community will reach Germany in order to be involved in the efforts for the reunification. Are you talking about the elections coming up in Greece and in Turkey, all in the first half of this year? No, and in Cyprus, Greece and Turkey. Cyprus, exactly less than a month now, right. the presidential elections. But how much of this harsh rhetoric that we're seeing now, the threats coming out of Turkey, for example. How much of this is just regular pre-election rhetoric? And how seriously do you still have to take those threats coming from the, from the Turkish president? Starting from the threats of the use of violence, of the use of force, not against us directly, but against the islands of the Aegean Sea, but nonetheless threats 
Of course, we are very concerned because if anything happens to the Aegean, will happen also, may happen also to Cyprus. But having said that, I hope that these are the rhetoric of Turkey for going to the elections, having nothing to offer to the Turkish people regarding the economy, with the inflation being where it is, and therefore they need to be sold, nationalism, bravado, and this is accompanied with threats. Well, which concessions are you willing to make to resume those stalled peace talks? We will make concession, any concessions that it takes to um, reunite the country, provided that these concessions do not damage, first of all, the security and stability of Cyprus, and second, does not impinge, in, in, infringe on the human rights, individual human rights of people. Now, there were a lot of topics on the table in your discussion with Annalena Baerbock, uh, the German foreign minister. Was one of them also the new EU relocation scheme? In December, the first asylum yes. seekers from Cyprus were transferred to Germany. Will this plan continue? Did Annalena Baerbock give you her word? Well, I didn't. Uh, I know that Germany has done it on its own will. We express our, expressed our gratitude for this. You know what is important in the European Union, and there should be a plan where member states acknowledge the solidarity for those that are in the first line. And, and the other member states acknowledge their responsibility towards all. So I think what, is, what has happened through the decision of Germany and France is a very good example for others to follow. So we don't expect that uh, the gesture of Germany will resolve the problem of so many illegal immigrants in Cyprus. And we do not expect that all these will be sent. The, the effort here is to work together for the repatriation of illegal immigrants, provided that they are only danger, they don't need protection. And this can be done in particular with people that nowadays ha are uh, coming from Sub-Saharan Africa, they are 10 times the number of asylum seekers of the past, which were already high. I can understand to receive people from Syria or from Afghanistan seeking protection. But I think Turkey has to understand also that by receiving them by air to Istanbul and accepting a bogus certificate that they are students to go to Cyprus uh, must change. What more do you expect from Germany when it comes to addressing Turkey and speaking out against um, some of the policies that the Turkish government is undertaking? Germany is in a position to speak with Turkey and speak with Turkey on a friendly basis and on a basis of give and take. So I believe that uh, Germany, and has demonstrated this, don't ask me for details, that uh, Turkey for this year, the year 22, um, has not entered into our exclusive economic zone to apply pressure neither have they proceeded in developments in, in Varosha, besides the fact that for both, they declare that they will do so. Mm. And I think that this has not taken place in 1922. It's partly due to 
Germany. 2022, yeah. Of course, you also talked about Russia's war against Ukraine and the implications on Europe. Surely. And energy is a big issue. Now, Cyprus claims that it can, in the future, in the medium-term future, play a major role because of the massive energy resources that you found around the island. Now, well, what is the time they are frame not there? massive. Uh, let us not exaggerate. But even the ones that are now, we would take in total everything in Cyprus, we go up to 10 trillion cubic feet, which is very important, mm. even if part of this mm. is come, is come, will come to go to Europe. It is very important uh, as a part of the contribution of anybody else to alleviate Europe for its present urgent needs. And um, any in total, the two companies that made the new discoveries are willing to be encouraged to proceed with the method of LNG, either a method on the side, FS, FS LNG, or through the uh, terminals in Egypt to send with tankers LNG to the next uh, port where there can be regasification, which is in, in, in Greece, and from there, the way it will be decided, how it will be distributed in, uh, in Europe. Then we have the electricity interconnector, which was agreed, uh, which is going to be financed by the European Union as a project of common interest, and this can also contribute in supply of energy with the... So the subsea cable that you're talking about? Yeah, that's right. Where you're a chairman of the project? No, I'm not. I was you chairman were. of the strategic yeah. studies. It's a private company. I have resigned altogether. But you, se you helped set it up? Well, I helped uh, design the strategic objectives. I'm not... Uh, no, you're not benefiting from it. I'm not no, saying that. No. But you helped set it up. Um, but let me say there that this is another form of getting energy to Europe. And of course, Cyprus has something that very few have in Europe, the sun. If we now get seriously to use, take advantage of the solar energy, then we can also be contributors to the... It's not like this, like I see outside. Where is the sun? But in Cyprus there is sun. Yeah, we miss it, not just for energy uh, supply, but... Let's <laughs> use it for energy and never mind it. You but what, what is the time frame tourists. still, Minister, when you talk about supplying natural gas to Europe? What time frame are we talking about? If the two companies, any and Total Energies, who are both two European companies, who made the last discoveries, are encouraged to put capital and do it, they will do it. But how do you encourage them? You encourage them by uh, giving them confirmation that the buyers are there and they promise to buy what they will send. Okay. That's how... When, uh, a, 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 a company, an energy company works. They need known customers from the beginning. Yeah, uh, could Germany be one such customer? Does uh, Germany need to be more explicit, do you think? Definitely Germany can be a customer, but along the road there are others, and perhaps, you know, they can agree as to how the distribution is going to be. If you get so-and-so from Azerbaijan, you don't need the ones from Cyprus or the Eastern Mediterranean. The other country will get uh, the quantity sent by Cyprus and the Eastern Mediterranean and so forth. I am not going to regulate this. We will need a European regulator. 
Now, another as aspect, of course, when you talk about Russia's war against Ukraine is the close relationship that your country had with Russia. Over, had. I said had ah. with Russia over decades. Okay. And you received a lot of criticism at the time. There were things like the Golden Visa program, offshore companies. Yeah. Now, you said in the press conference um, with Annalena Baerbock that Cyprus is willing and open to sharing information on people Absolutely. that exploit Cyprus, that use Cyprus Absolutely. to circumvent as sanctions. We are, as we are doing with the United States, as we are doing with the UK. Uh, But how big is your regret that Cyprus is one of those countries where that is happening, where people are circumventing sanctions? I doubt if there are any people circumvent the actions, the sanctions. Let them come to Cyprus. Let them tell us who is this person, one person, two person. Let them let us discuss with them, and they are, we are available for them to have a permanent kind of surveillance. We are an open book, as I have said. Listen, th Cyprus after the war in Ukraine began. And uh, the fact that the most important issue, the territorial integrity, the sovereignty, and the non violability of borders has been so violently violated, it brings us memories of what, what has happened to us during the Turkish invasion and occupation of, of one third of our country. So we were obliged to go through our own Zeidenwende, our, our foreign policy has changed dramatically because of this event. We are now, we know where we are standing, We know that everybody acknowledges that we are a credible and uh, faithful ally to the members of the European Union and the other allies of the European Union. I think this road is irreversible from now on. And all stupidities which took place with selling passports and all things like that has been abandoned. All the people who were on the sanctions saw their passports withdrawn. And if anybody else is uh, not observing the laws of our country, they will definitely see their passports withdrawn as well. I want to ask you a bit about the atmosphere on your island because there are lots of people who live in Cyprus who have Russian or Ukrainian origin. Can you feel the tensions on your island? In there are some times when there are demonstrations from the one side or the other, there are uh, um, tension, there is tension. But this is the It's not anything difficult, it takes place. Uh, Cyprus is a hospitable country. Those who can legally be in Cyprus, they are most welcome. But also, it's a country which has shown its humanitarian face vis-à-vis -vis the refugees from Ukraine and vis-à-vis -vis their treatment in Cyprus, which is, according to the Ukrainian ambassador in Nicosia, one of the best in the world. You know we pay for their stay in hotels if they have nowhere else to go. They have the right to find a job. They go to schools free. They have free freedom of care from the health care system. And I don't think that the um, society there gets impatient with these people. They understand that we, the Cypriots, one third of them were refugees in the past, and they understand their situation. Similar to this country, where people have their own memories of um, families fleeing, etc. Yeah. 
Now, this is your third time as foreign minister, so you've seen a fair bit of international diplomacy. What do you see as the way forward when it comes to this war, Russia's war on Ukraine? How can Russia be brought to a situation where it will end the war? Well, first of all, I would say that since we have decided to stand by Ukraine in defending itself, and we saw indeed a very courageous, I would say heroic, resistance on behalf of the Ukrainian people, I think that it is only fair to leave the Ukrainians decide for themselves when and how they will accept a ceasefire and whether they will negotiate the end of the war. I find it legitimate that they are asking that all Russian troops should withdraw from occupied Ukrainian territories during the present war or before, like in, Ukraine, in Crimea. Otherwise, the only thing now, our responsibility now, is to allow them to decide for themselves, not to be pressurized whether they should stop or not stop a war. But that means that the EU will have to continue to supply Ukraine with aid. That's it. Unavoidably. Foreign Minister, thank you very much. Thank you.